Hello everyone and welcome to the Driverless AI Starter Course. My name is Andrea and I will be your instructor throughout this learning experience, which is part of our H2O AI University Certification Program. This learning path is specially designed for you to go through at your own pace and it will help you onboard on some of the basic functionalities of the Driverless AI platform while working on a concrete example along the way. If you are looking for an AI platform which makes your life easier by automating data science and machine learning workflows, look no more, because this is the place to start. H2O Driverless AI is specifically designed to make machine learning accessible to everyone by empowering its users, no matter the background, to use the best algorithms there are and leverage available data through a cool and friendly interface. So buckle up, because in the following modules, I'm going to guide you through the main steps of the machine learning iterative process with driverless AI. And by the end of this learning path, you will know how to add your data sets to the driverless AI platform, create auto visualizations, tweak various settings and controls to set up an AutoML or an automated machine learning experiment, generate AutoML pipelines and models, and create various artifacts such as auto documentation, model pipeline, model predictions, and interpretability outputs. After having completed the driverless AI starter course learning path, you will receive a certificate of completion. Nevertheless, learning by doing is the way to go if you wish to become autonomous as quickly as possible. So your attention and contribution are also required throughout this class as there will be practical assignments for you to complete and your knowledge will be tested. I wish you good luck with your learning and please don't hesitate to leave us your feedback at the end of your experience to let us know how it went. Here we go. First, let's start with the reasons why you would use driverless AI in the first place. H2O driverless AI is an artificial intelligence platform which automates some of the most difficult data science and machine learning workflows, such as feature engineering, model training and tuning, model evaluation and selection, and model deployment, monitoring, and management. This platform aims to achieve the highest predictive accuracy comparable to expert data scientists, but in much shorter time, thanks to an end-to-end -end automation process. Additionally, driverless AI offers automatic visualizations and machine learning interpretability capabilities. Especially in regulated industries, model transparency and explanation are just as important as predictive performance. Modeling pipelines, such as feature engineering and models, are exported in full fidelity without approximations, both as Python modules and as pure Java standalone scoring artifacts. So, driverless AI helps you apply the best practices by ensuring that you are thoroughly guided. From the beginning of the project, when you bring your data from various sources up to the end of the data science cycle, where you receive reliable results for your business use case and you deploy your scoring pipelines. Driverless AI also empowers data scientists to work on projects faster using automation and state-of-the-art computing power from GPUs to accomplish tasks in minutes that used to take months. As a data scientist myself, before hearing about the existence of AutoML capabilities, I would usually do everything from scratch in a data science project. You can imagine how time consuming this was, as I would hard code all the feature engineering steps for hundreds of columns. I would decide on the most adapted machine learning algorithm, and in the most cases, a lot of trial and error happened. Then I would apply cross-validation and grid search techniques to tune the hyperparameters, wait for ages for the results, as I did not have parallel computing capabilities, hard code the output of the results, 
and repeat the process for other machine learning algorithms. Not to mention putting the model in production, yet another subject which would double or triple the amount of time spent on a project for those who did not have MLOP capabilities. A lot of resources, a lot of time, a lot of nerves. With driverless AI, anyone, including expert and junior data scientists, domain scientists and data engineers, can develop hundreds of trusted machine learning models in no time. This next generation automatic machine learning platform ensures highly advanced AutoML strategies and state-of-the-art machine learning techniques, as well as delivers unique and advanced functionalities for auto feature engineering built by Kaggle Grandmasters, scoring pipelines and low latency deployments, and rich and comprehensive model explainability and interpretability. So if you want to implement the best data science practices, diminish the amount of time spent on developing the data science lifecycle, and get explainable, accurate, and trusted models fast, then H2O driverless AI is the way to go. Driverless AI supports both supervised and unsupervised machine learning models, including classification, regression, clustering, time series, and NLP. Depending on your business case and what you want to predict, or what your goal or your target will be, you will fall in one of these two categories. In this learning path, we are going to focus on a supervised machine learning problem, meaning that we will predict a feature or a variable which has a label such as a number or a category. Based on the historical data provided by the business, we are going to predict what type of credit score our loan applications have. We will ask driverless AI to automatically find patterns in the data that lead to an application being good or bad. We will then review how well the model does at finding those applications which prove to have a bad score and use the model interpretation capabilities of driverless AI to understand what patterns drive credit score values. Of course, driverless AI has many more advanced capabilities which deal with time series and image recognition, as well as NLP. But as it is an introductory course, these concepts are not covered in this learning path. Additionally, please refer to our learning platform, which directly addresses these topics, or feel free to request new content by submitting a feedback form from the H2O University portal. So to come back to our supervised machine learning use case, if you are predicting a number, such as how much will a customer spend, then you are dealing with a regression use case. If you are predicting a category, such as whether a customer will make a purchase or not, then you are dealing with a classification use case. In this graph, we can see the visual representation of the two supervised learning algorithms. Each dot represents an observation from a particular data set. The black line represents the model found after the training has been performed. The wavier the line, the more complex the model. So the question that we want to address is, for a new observation added to the data set, will my best model be able to accurately predict its target value? Spoiler alert, with driverless AI, the answer is yes. Now that we have a good overview of what the H2O driverless AI platform is about, Let's dig into the more practical parts of this course. Before moving on, you need to make sure that you have the right user credentials. Normally, all of our hybrid or cloud customers have access to the platform and to an AI engine which can open driverless AI. So if this is the case, please make sure that you are connected with your user account to the driverless AI platform as you would normally do. Please note that this learning path has been specially built to give you the possibility to follow along, even though you do not have a driverless AI license. So in case you don't have any access to the platform, you can create your own account for free in our cloud environment, specially designed for learning purposes called Aquarium. Please connect to the following URL, aquarium.h2o.ai which will take you to the Aquarium login page where you need to create an account. 
Once connected on the page, please go through the Create a new account steps by entering your first name, last name, organization, country, and email. Check the I'm not a robot box and then click on Create account and email temporary password at the bottom of the page. A password will be sent to your email within a couple of minutes, so don't hesitate to check it out and then follow the login instructions to connect. Enter the email you used to create the Aquarium password. Enter the password you received over email from Aquarium. Verify that you are not a robot by checking the I'm not a robot box and click on login. You can change your password anytime by clicking on the I forgot my password button and then email temporary password. Once connected to Aquarium, please click on the Browse Labs button and select the following lab, Driverless AI version 1.10.5. Click Start Lab at the bottom of the new screen and wait for a couple of minutes. Once the instance is ready for you to use, you will be provided with the Driverless AI URL. Then click on it to open a new page, agree to the terms and conditions, and then provide the following username and password. Username starter, password starter. Please make sure that these are exactly the login credentials that you will use and not the other two options that you see on the driverless AI training page. Otherwise, the assets that I'm going to use will not be the same and you will not be able to entirely follow along with me. Once connected to the Aquarium driverless AI instance, you will have two hours available to complete the lab, by the end of which your work will be erased. You can also retake the lab multiple times if you want, but you will need to recreate the previous steps from scratch. If you want to test driverless AI without the constraints the Aquarium Lab holds, such as the two-hour mark, please contact us in the feedback form. Now that we are connected on the Aquarium instance, this is what the H2O driverless AI landing page should look like. If you wish, you can follow along, but I would recommend paying attention to my presentation first and then solve the assignments which you will find at the end of the lecture. They are specially designed for you to get a lot of quality practice out of this class. For those connecting for the first time on the driverless AI platform, there are no data sets available. You need to import them yourselves and this is what we are going to do in the next module. But for now, let's just explore the user interface together. On the top left side of the screen, you can see what the driverless AI version number I am using. So, depending on when you are going to take the training or what the connection settings of your company are, this might change. Nevertheless, Please rest assured that the majority of the changes do not affect the main functionalities that we are going to use in this class. On the top right side of the screen, there are a couple of tabs. When connecting to the driverless AI platform, the default landing page is the datasets tab. This is the place where you are going to find all your stored datasets. On the top of the screen, you can also see a projects tab, which is the place where you can organize your work, gather all your experiments for a particular use case in just one place, compare the experiments or collaborate with peers, just to give a couple of examples. In the datasets section, you can view all your datasets that you uploaded or added to the driverless AI platform. Next up, there is an AutoViz tab where you can automatically generate visualizations based on your chosen dataset and its various feature types. In the Experiments tab, you can find all your experiments and all the information that you need with respect to the trained models. This is the place where we are going to spend the most part of our time, as from this page, we can do a lot of interesting things, such as creating new experiments, training models, creating recipes, viewing the results, and many more. In the Diagnostics tab, you can get even more insights from your models and experiments. Here, you can learn additional information about the dataset, and you can also download predictions, view interactive metric plots, and get scores about particular experiments. In the Machine Learning Interpretability view, or the MLI tab, 
Driverless AI employs a host of different techniques and methodologies for interpreting and explaining the results of its models. This is an entire topic in itself and will be treated thoroughly in another learning path. The Recipes tab gives you the possibility to add and manage your own custom recipes, which are Python code snippets that can be uploaded into driverless AI at runtime, like plugins. The Deployments tab is the place where you can manage all your deployments. This is also a subject that will be covered separately in another lesson. Next up, the Resources tab, which contains the driverless AI documentation, as well as additional information about the system that was used for running the experiment. If you do not want to use the driverless AI user interface too much, there are also R and Python clients, which give you the possibility to code yourself if you wish. And lastly, from the user tab, you can log out, but you can also have access to the user settings and all the available notifications of the platform. Now, let's start exploring the datasets tab. As mentioned before, here I am able to see all my added datasets into the driverless AI platform. As a reminder, if you are using your own user account, and as long as you do not erase the instance, you will be able to access all your datasets at any time. For those using Aquarium, this is not an option and all your assets will be erased after two hours. So when connecting for the first time to the platform, the landing page is blank and there are no datasets, but you can add specific files by clicking on the add dataset button. Depending on the data source connections of your company, you might have access to different or additional options. In my case, I can add a dataset from a couple of sources, among which the file system, my own PC, Amazon S3, H2O Drive, Snowflake, the feature store, or a new URL address. Additionally, we can also have a data recipe to fetch any external data. Now we will add our file by clicking on the Add Dataset button and selecting the Amazon S3 option. There is a new pop-up window appearing, and in order to have access to our H2O Amazon public repository, let's type data.h2o.ai after the two slashes. Then please click on training slash. There are, as for the moment of this recording, 29 matches found, and the file of interest to us is called credit underscore score dot csv let's select it and add this file to our datasets tab then click on the button that appears on the top of the screen called click to import selection after a few seconds we can see that the file has been successfully loaded and that it appears now on our datasets page presented in a row format with the following information name of the dataset path size number of rows, and we can observe that the file contains 100,000 rows in total. Column numbers, here we can see that there are in total 26 columns or features. There is a status that we will be looking at soon and date of creation. In case you have a lot of datasets in this tab, you can search a specific file by name or by date of creation in the search bar section underneath the dataset's title. Additionally, if you wish to delete the dataset, you can tick the square in front of the name of the file and click on the delete one item button. I will not do that, so I will unselect the dataset by clicking once again on the square in front of the name. Instead, let's learn more about our dataset. As for any structured dataset, we have the unique identifier or the ID, which in this case represents an individual application for a loan. Each row is what I like to call the unity of measure, which concerns a specific transaction, or in this case, a specific loan application. We have more information about each application, such as the applicant's ID, name, age, occupation, annual income, monthly salary, bank account information, loan details, or transaction history. 
The credit underscore score feature indicates whether or not each application has a good or a bad credit score. This credit score feature is our goal or our target. It is the column whose values we are going to predict so that for new applications, we have an accurate approximation of what a good or a bad loan application looks like. To rephrase, based on the historical data that was provided by the dataset, driverless AI is going to train accurate models to help us detect whether new applications are going to have a good or a bad credit score. This is our business case, and the better we are at predicting bad credit score applications, the faster we are going to avoid giving a loan to people who are most likely to default and not reimburse their loan anymore. In this process, we are not going to run just one model at a time, as we would normally do manually in our own Python notebook. With driverless AI, it's like you have a hive mind of Kaggle Grandmasters offering support at all times and coming to your aid to make sure that the most accurate and the most suited machine learning models are being run in parallel and that the best ones are pushed forward. Now, let's focus on the status column from the dataset tab and click on the button click for actions or in any other place of the credit score.csv row. There is a drop-down window that appears with the following options. Details, where you can preview the dataset, you get the descriptive summary, and you can also modify the data directly in the platform by adding a recipe. The Visualize button is the place where you get automatic visualizations for the dataset. There is a data prep option for the driverless AI version that we are working with right now, and here you can transform or split your dataset. In previous versions, there was only a split button instead. Next up, we have the predict button, the place where we are going to spend the most part of our time, as this is where we will set up our first experiment with driverless AI, launch it, and see the results. And on this drop-down menu, you also have the options to rename the dataset, download it, display logs, and delete the dataset. These options that I just presented are the same for each dataset. So next, let's focus a bit more on them. Let's say that we are not familiar with the credit score.csv dataset and that we would like to learn more about it. This is what the details and the visualize buttons are for. To give us more insights about the feature types, the data distribution, possible missing values or outliers, etc. When clicking on the details button, there is a new window that opens which shows us some descriptive statistics about each one of our features. Driverless AI also automatically identifies the storage type, and if you wish, you can change the logical type of a particular feature by selecting the Auto Detect button from the Feature Props section and choosing a different column feature engineering type afterwards. We will stay with the default settings for this first project. Back on the Dataset Details tab, we can also scroll right to see all the features from the dataset. But if you have tens and hundreds of them, I would recommend using the search section underneath the dataset details title. For example, if I start typing the word credit to filter out the columns by name, there are seven of them, among which the credit score column, our target. Also, on the top of each feature name, you can see an interactive graph that gives you a nice view on the column's distribution. So, right off the bat, we can observe that the column credit score, which is a string type or a categorical type, has only two unique values, and it contains around 70% of the applications labeled as good, whereas the rest of them, around 29%, are labeled as poor or bad. Let's remind ourselves of the use case. As a representative of an insurance company or a bank, we would definitely want to avoid giving loans to applications which have a bad credit score, because this will determine whether our business will work at a profit or a loss mid and long term. As a data scientist, on the other hand, working for the same insurance company or bank, being able to accurately predict whether an application might have a good or a bad credit score is the goal. Hence, the need to have a highly qualitative 
and unbiased data set, as well as good machine learning models that can be easily scaled up. If you want to visualize the content of the data set, you also have the option Dataset Rows on the top left side of the screen. This button gives you a preview of the dataset exactly as it is presented in its raw format before being added to the driverless AI platform. As in our dataset, we have 100,000 applications or rows. On the bottom of the screen, we see that we are able to navigate through multiple pages, and here we are just visualizing the first 23 of them. When you are done visualizing the rows, you can click the button Dataset Overview from the top right side of the screen to come back to the Dataset Details page. Remember that we talked about recipes in the intro? Well, there is a third button on the Datasets page called Modify by Recipe that you can click on to write code and create a modified dataset. New datasets can be created by modifying an existing dataset with the help of a data recipe. So, if you click this button, you have a drop-down window with a couple of options. You can provide a data recipe URL, which means that you can load a custom recipe from a URL source, from GitHub, or from a local file. You can also upload the data recipe. You can apply an existing data recipe that you loaded earlier in your driverless AI platform, or you can click the Live Code button to write code directly into the driverless AI itself. Nice trick to have in your pocket, right? Let's click on the Live Code button. In this new pop-up window that appears, you have an example written in Python code already. If applied, this code will create a new dataset based on the previous one, by taking into consideration the active lines of code, meaning the ones that are not commented and do not have a hashtag sign in front of them. Here, out of the original dataset, only four columns will be kept, but you can add any type of Python code to filter the dataset out and to modify it as you please. You can also reset the default code, download it, or preview the new dataset. And at the end, if you are happy with the results, you can click on the Apply button to apply the modifications and create a new dataset based on your chosen function code. Let's click on Apply, which will trigger a new task that creates a new dataset from the custom recipe. Now we are brought back on the Datasets tab and we can see an additional row called one.creditscore.csv. The column number of this new dataset is four, exactly as we requested in the function code. And we can also click for actions on this new row to access its dataset details page, exactly as in the previous case. So congrats, you can now perform data manipulations on your original dataset directly from H2O Driverless AI. Feel free to explore this page and move to the next lecture when ready.
Now, let's move forward and select the Click for Actions button of the credit score that CSV data set and click on the Visualize option. In a couple of seconds, the automatic visualizations are being prepared by Driverless AI and we are being transported on the AutoViz tab. The AutoViz page is similar to the Datasets tab in the sense that after the task has been completed, you get a row with the visualizations prepared for your data set and you can search for any of the visualizations in the search bar. For each row, you have the dataset name, a message that indicates that the visualization is being prepared or is ready, the status done if completed, the date on which the visualization was created, and the time it took to complete. Additionally, you can also open the visualization or delete it, as well as add new visualizations if you wish, by clicking on the New Visualization button. Let's click on the current row to access the graphs inside the credit score.csv dataset. Please note that the type of graphs on the visualization page can vary based on the feature types in your dataset. Once you click to view inside the visualization, you are taken on a new page where you will see that there are nine visualizations automatically created from our credit score.csv dataset. They are recommendations, correlated scatter plots, skewed histograms, disparate box plots, outliers, the correlation graph, the parallel coordinates plot, and there is a radar plot, and the data heat map as well. Additionally, from this AutoViz page, you can also view and download logs that were automatically generated by driverless AI as well as add a new graph if you would wish to personalize your experience even more. For this, you can click on the Add Graph button and then select a new plot type. Let's say that we are interested in the annual income distribution for all our 100,000 applications. We are going to choose the histogram chart and we will select the annual income feature for the variable name field. Please take a look at the other options in the custom plot window. You can choose to perform a log or a square root transformation, and you can also decide on the number of bars to show on your plot. We will leave the options as they are, and let's click on the Save button. Once done, we see that on the visualization page, there is a new graph that shows the repetition of the annual income. We can observe that the majority of the applications come from individuals which have an annual income below 40 or 50K.
I would love to take a moment and look at the correlation graph, a highly interactive visual. When I click on it, you can see on a 2D map the names of all the 26 features from our dataset and their degree of correlation. They are represented by a connecting line which has the color between violet and red. Apparently, there are four features which are not correlated at all because they are not connected by any lines. And these features are ID, customer ID, age, and credit utilization ratio. Underneath the correlation graph, you can see a scale that varies from 0 to 1, which represents the degree of correlation between the features. The color scale used for the connecting edges runs from low, violet, to high, red. Variables connected by short red edges tend to be highly correlated. If we drag slowly the left triangle to the right on the horizontal axis, we can observe that its value increases from zero and that the graph updates in real time. The lines which connect features with a smaller correlation value than the newly updated left triangle value disappear. At about 0.60, we can observe that there are only three features correlated among themselves. Amount invested monthly, monthly in-hand salary, and annual income. And if we drag the left triangle even further on the horizontal axis, up to the value 0 0.99, we can see that the two features, monthly in-hand salary and annual income, are still connected which indicates that these two features are highly correlated. On the correlation graph, you can also click on the Reset the Scale button to set the horizontal axis back to its default values. Additionally, for each visual in Driverless AI, you can also download the graph in a CVG format or click on the Help button for additional information. Let's exit the correlation graph by clicking on the X right top button of the view and come back to the visualizations page. It is not the purpose of this class to go through each one of the graphs. So in case you are interested in a more detailed explanation, feel free to consult the H2O documentation on this topic, as well as refer to our H2O University platform for more insightful content.
Now, let's continue on our data science lifecycle and prepare our dataset for modeling by splitting it into training and testing. Driverless AI lets you split the dataset into two subsets that can be used as train and test datasets during modeling. For those more Python savvy, this is the train test split function that you would apply before training a model on your dataset. We will go back to the datasets tab and click on the credit score.csv to take a look at the data prep action button, which has a split functionality. To split a dataset, let's click on the split button and the new window will appear with the dataset splitter view. We will then specify an output name 1 and an output name 2 for each segment of the split. For example, you can name the first segment credit score train and the second one credit score test. The training set is the data used to train the model and it needs to be big enough to get significant results. I usually like to select 80% of the entire data set in this case. And the test set is the data that will be used to confirm the final model's results, which will be the rest of the 20%. This will split the data set randomly, but optionally you can add a fold column to keep rows belonging to the same group together, perform time column based split to train on past data and test on future data, set up a random seed which will generate the same split every time. By default, the random seed is already set in place with a 1, 2, 3, 4 number. Additionally, you can perform a stratified sampling based on the target column. In most of the cases, we do not see too many bad credit scores. We learned from the details page that around one-fifth of the applications have a bad credit score. So, to make sure that we have a similar ratio of the target column in both training and testing datasets, we are going to add a classification target column. Which one? You guessed it, our target feature, the credit score. So, let's select it. Next up, please use the slider to select the 1.8 split ratio or modify it directly in the train slash valid split ratio field. And then click on the save button. Driverless AI loads the two new fields in the datasets page, and we can see that the split ratio of 80% for the training set and 20% for the test set was selected. The credit score train contains 80,000 rows or individual applications and 26 columns or features representing each the attributes or the detailed information of the application. We will train our models on this dataset next. The credit score test dataset contains 20,000 rows and will be used to test our predictions from the training data to see if our trained models generalize well. Now, let's focus on the most interesting part of driverless AI, the predict button, which will bring us to a new window where all the action takes place. We are going to launch our first experiment, which means that we are going to generate a prediction using the dataset of our choice. In this case, we will use the credit score train dataset. Remember that we are interested in predicting whether a credit score is going to be good or bad based on the training data, the historical data provided to us by the business. By applying the same models from the training data to the test data set, driverless AI makes sure that only the best models are going to be considered, because those ones will give us high prediction scores. If this is the first time launching an experiment, the following prompt will appear asking if you want to take a tour. For a quick tour of the experiments page, you can select Yes. This will cover some of the following items. Selecting a training dataset, a target column, or specifying a date or a time component in case you are dealing with a time series problem. This is a separate learning path that you can follow later on if interested. For the time being, please select Not Now as, for the most part, this learning path will cover what is mentioned during the tour. The Experiment Preview page will appear next. This preview page displays all the settings that driverless AI will use before launching an experiment. What I particularly like is the Assistant button that you can find on the top right side of the Experiment Setup section. 
And this is because it presents an interactive tour for first-time users too. If you click on the Assistant button to enable it, you will see yellow circles appearing around sections of the experiment page. You can click on them to get additional insights about the field and you can navigate through the driverless AI interface while also using the previous and the next button. Let's click on the Assistant button again to disable it. Please also note that whenever you hover over a section, you have a pop-up window that appears, which gives you a thorough explanation about that specific functionality. I am going to select the experiment type, and because our target variable is the categorical feature credit score, which contains only two labels, the experiment type is going to be supervised. The display name is optional. If this field is left blank, Driverless AI will automatically generate a name for the experiment, which you can also rename later on from the Experiments tab directly. Let's give the name Baseline to our experiment, as we are not going to modify any of the options from the default settings just yet. The Training Dataset section is already completed, and it indicates the name of the dataset being used to create the experiment. The Test Dataset section uses the dataset on which the model generated from the training dataset will be tested. As a reminder, this testing dataset is not used during the model's training. Let's select the credit score test dataset for this particular field by clicking on the test dataset field and choosing the credit score test from the new window that appears. In the experiment setup, you can specify a couple of additional options. The validation dataset used for tuning the modeling pipeline, the fold column, which ensures that rows with the same value represent groups that should be kept together in the training, validation, or cross-validation datasets. The weight column, which indicates the observation weight if applicable. Rows with higher weights have thus higher importance. Dropped columns and the time column option, which provides a chronological order to our data and is currently set on off. Because we do not have any time dimension component in our data set, it will stay as such, but please note that if you turn it on, you can access the time series functionalities of the driverless AI. Again, this is a subject treated in a separate learning path, so please make sure that you check out our H2O University learning platform in case you are interested. Except for the target column field, the other fields are optional, and we are not going to modify them for this first baseline experiment. Now, let's select the target column by clicking on the intermittent checkbox. A new window will appear, and if we scroll down, we can find our credit score feature. Please select it. Once this is done, there is a new world that opens to us with additional training settings. Let's explore them. Your experiment page should look similar to the one you see on the screen. These are further suggestions based on the selected train dataset. Driverless AI has detected that our target column is a string type, which contains only two unique values. We have 80k values in total to train our model on, and the target frequency, meaning the credit score which is bad, is around 23k, or one-fifth of our entire dataset.
Next up on our experiment page, the training settings, which are very unique to H2O driverless AI. They give you an initial setup for your experiment's accuracy, time, and interpretability, as well as the evaluation metric called scorer. The knobs in the training settings section are adjustable, and as we change their value, the information on the left side of the screen under the what do these settings mean changes as well. Each knob can be set to a value between 1 and 10. However, driverless AI will automatically suggest default intelligent settings for your experiment to get you started quickly. The settings are fairly self-explanatory. As we increase the value on the accuracy knob, more work is done by driverless AI and more things will be considered or performed as part of the feature engineering, training, and selection process. Changing this value affects the feature evolution and the final pipeline. Feature evolution uses a genetic algorithm to find the best set of model parameters and feature transformations to be used in the final model. Final pipeline represents the number of models and the validation method used in the final pipeline. Next up, the time knob concerns the relative time required for completing the experiment, which means that higher settings will take longer. In this case, driverless AI has more time to do more work and find the best model. Early stopping will occur if the experiment doesn't improve the score for the specified amount of iterations. The interpretability knob impacts the complexity of the models that driverless AI builds. If there is a strong need or requirement to have a model that is clearly explainable, then a higher value should be used. A lower value means that driverless AI is allowed to be more creative, perhaps coming up with engineered features that might not make any sense to someone looking at them, but do provide more accurate models. Changing the interpretability level affects the feature pre-pruning strategy, monotonicity constraints, and the feature engineering search space. We already mentioned this, but on the right side, you will see the description of an experiment preview based on the selected settings. As you change each knob value, the experiment preview pane will automatically update to show you how this change impacts your specific experiment. If I move the time knob value at 1 instead of 5, on the left side of the page, I see that the estimated runtime value diminishes. Instead of stopping after 10 iterations of no improvements, the early stopping might be completely disabled, which is the case here. Model and feature tuning, feature evolution, and final pipeline values decrease as well. If I further change the accuracy and the interpretability knobs values also, the left side of the screen updates accordingly. As this project is a baseline, we will run the experiment with the default settings. The last knob that I want to talk about is the scorer, which shows what the evaluation metric for the experiment is. Driverless AI selects the best scorer based on your dataset. For this particular dataset, which is a classification problem, Driverless AI has suggested for us the AUC or Area Under the Curve metric. But other scorers can be manually selected if you click on the Scorer knob. There will be a new pop-up window that appears with a list of scorer options and depending on your business case, you might want to choose a different one. There is an extensive amount of documentation from H2O AI in the Resources tab in regards to what each scorer means, so please don't hesitate to check it out. Just for the sake of our learning, let's just change the target column field from credit score to annual income, a numeric feature, to see how driverless AI deals with the regression type. Once I changed the target, the driverless AI page changed to adapt to this new setup. The feature type is now real. We get the mean and the standard deviation measures, and underneath the four knobs, the model type has changed to regression, and the score knob shows RMSC instead of the AUC metric now. If you click on the score knob, you can observe that the metrics are all specific to regression problems, such as Gini or R-squared. 
Let's switch our target column back to the credit score feature for our classification problem and come back to the launching window where we will leave the AUC metric for the score knob. Now, let's talk a bit about the expert settings. Driverless AI provides a variety of options in the expert settings that let you customize your experiment. What I particularly like about the expert settings window is that you can filter by words or tags. This is a very useful feature to have if you are in a hurry and you are searching for a particular setting such as duplicate rows. With this filter, you can see what the default options for detecting or dropping duplicates are, and you can also change them, for example. Please note that driverless AI has already the detect rows option enabled for you by default, but that it does not drop them automatically for you. For this, you can use the drop option. We will not remove any duplicates from this training data set. This was just an example. Let's erase the duplicate rows filter and come back to the main window of the expert settings where you have three main tabs, training, experiment documentation, and system. In the system tab, you can change the default settings to handle failure or set up the number of cores or GPUs to use while training the models. The experiment documentation presents settings for the automatically generated document that gets created after the experiment is completed. Here, you can set up five tabs, which concern general settings, settings about data and models, as well for model performance and interpretation. In the training tab, we can find common and advanced settings for seven tabs. General, data, feature engineering, models, genetic algorithm, validation, and deployment. Here, you can find a lot of advanced functionalities that range from regression and classification scenarios up to time series, image, and NLP. Also, the training tab is the place where you can include specific transformers in the feature engineering tab, specific models in the models tab, and specific scorers in the validation tab. So, in case you are wondering which are some of the default options that driverless AI is using to run an experiment, this is the place to check this out and uh, change them before launching the experiment. If you know what you are doing, of course. We are not going to get into more advanced settings on the expert settings tab. This will be treated in a separate lesson. But please remember that after you have clicked on the launch button, you cannot modify the expert settings anymore. Another interesting point to mention about the expert settings is that in case you do not find your desired metric or scorer, you can add it yourself by using the Add Custom Recipes option from the Recipes tab or from the expert settings window directly. Let's click on the top left button called Add Custom Recipes from this window. Here, you can upload Python code from your own PC, a URL from a bucket, or you can even write your own code in the driverless console by clicking on the With Editor button. We are going to upload a custom score recipe using the URL from our H2O GitHub repository. Next to the Add Custom Recipes on the right side, there is a button called Official Recipes. Let's click on it. A new page will appear, which brings us to the H2O AI slash driverless AI dash recipes repository. Let's select the scorers folder, then classification, and then the binary folder. Since we are dealing with a binary classification problem, we are searching for a scorer that fits this type. Here we have a couple of scorers that we can use in addition to the existing ones from the driverless AI platform. Let's click on the first link and go with the average underscore mcc.py scorer. Then please click on the raw button on top of the code on the right hand side of the screen. This will give us the raw version of the Python code used to create the scorer. All you need to do is to copy paste this URL back in the driverless window of the expert settings. 
Let's now head back to the Driverless AI platform and click on the Add Custom Recipes. Then, please click on the From URL button. A new pop-up window appears and you can paste the copied URL in the Load Custom Recipe field. Click Save and Driverless AI will indicate next that the new custom recipe is being uploaded and that the recipes list is being updated with a new scorer. To make sure that the scorer appears on the main page and that we can select it from the scorer knob, let's do one last thing. Click on the Validation sub tab from the Expert Settings window, then click on the drop down button called Select Values underneath the Include Specific Scorer's title on the right side of the screen. Make sure to select the AVG MCC Scorer as well and click Done. Please click Save on the Expert Settings window to save the updates and go back to the main window. To check that our recipe has been taken into account for this particular experiment, let's click on the Scorer knob and take a look at the options. Now, our imported AVG MCC Scorer appears among the options and you can select this one if you choose. As for the moment, let's stick with the default AUC Scorer. I'm going to click on the X button and close this window and I think that we are pretty ready to launch the experiment now. Just before this, you might wonder, what is the difference between Launch Experiment and Create Leaderboard? Well, the Launch Experiment launches just one experiment, whereas the Create Leaderboard option runs multiple diverse experiments with different settings and brings them into the Projects section for review. So, buckle up and let's hit the Launch button and create our first baseline experiment.
Now the game is on. Driverless AI starts going through different stages to output the best pipeline for our dataset. In the background, the platform does a lot of things. It prepares the data, checks for duplicate rows, detects column types, prepares validation splits, checks for data shift and data leakage, performs model and feature tuning, and much, much more. As the completion percentage increases, we can see that on the lower side of the screen, there are a couple of graphs that are getting updated. You have already seen some of the information presented on this page. On the top left side of the screen, we have the experiment setup. As a reminder, once the experiment has been launched, you cannot modify any of the information here. This is also the same case with the training settings section, from the top right side. Our knobs are blocked in place after the experiment launches. If you want to modify them, you need to go on the Experiments tab and create a new experiment or continue with the previous one. Nevertheless, there is a lot of stuff going on in the middle of the screen. We see a loading wheel that indicates the progression percentage towards the completion of the experiment. Please note that you can stop an experiment by clicking the Finish button. The CPU memory section underneath the training section provides information around additional insights, scores, notifications, logs, and trace. The iteration data validation section is training at each iteration models that are looking to maximize our chosen score, the EOC or area under the curve score. The Time Settings knob determines the maximum number of iterations, which are represented by the white vertical lines. At each iteration, the machine learning models are being trained through an evolutionary training process. They are represented by green dots on the iteration graph. So, each dot represents an individual model that employs a particular number of features and its place. Driverless AI learns from each iteration what worked in the past or not, and as the experiment gets closer to completion, we are able to see an improvement of the scorer and the final model where its final best score value will be chosen. You can also interact with the view, and if you hover over a particular green dot, you can see what the model type is, as well as the number of features with which it has been trained. What I like about this graph is that on the left side of the iteration graph, you receive minimum and maximum score values. This gives you an idea about the performance range of our experiment. Next up, the variable importance view. Here is the place where we can see a variety of automatically generated engineered features, which we will use to understand our model and its making decision process. Driverless AI performs automatic feature engineering in the background as part of an experiment's model building process. New features are being created by applying transformations on the original dataset columns, based on a particular set of rules called transformers. The following transformers are available for regression, multi-class and binary classification experiments. Numeric and Categorical Transformers, Time and Date Transformers, Time Series and NLP Transformers, and Image Transformers. For each algorithm in part, there is a particular importance order that is being created, and the most important variables that contribute the most to the prediction are shown in decreasing order of importance here. During the training phase, the variable importance list will automatically update, and you can hover over the iteration graph on a specific dot to see its list. The complete list of features used in the final model, original and transformed, as well as their estimated feature importance, is available in the Download Summary and Logs option after the experiment has been completed. On the bottom right-hand side, we can see additional information about each model and its performance. This section provides a couple of nice interactive graphs depending on the machine learning algorithm being used. For binary classification experiments, driverless AI shows the following graphs. The row curve, the precision recall chart, the lift chart, 
the Kolmogorov Smirnov chart, and the GAINS chart. For regression experiments, driverless AI shows residuals and the actual versus predicted graphs. So, let's wait for a couple of moments for our experiment to complete. Now it's time for you to enjoy a coffee or some tea before coming back and following the next module. See you soon! We are back and we see now that our experiment has been completed. Before taking a look at the output, allow me to click on the Experiment tab on the top side of the screen. Here is the place where we can find all of our experiments. We can see that the only experiment that we have is the baseline, and in case you follow the assignment so far, you should also see another experiment with the customized knobs. This Experiments tab gives us additional information on the target that we used, the data set, the values that we chose for the accuracy, time and interpretability knobs, the size of the experiment, the score, which in our case is AUC, the score values for training and testing, as well as the status and the time it took to complete the experiment. If you click on the three vertical dots on the left side of the experiment, you will see a new pop-up window from which you can choose one of the following options. Open the experiment, create an interpretation, create a new experiment out of the previous one, retrain the experiment, create a recipe, rename it, export or delete the experiment. We will click on Open so that we take a look at the results. On the Experiment Baseline page, we can observe that the progress wheel has disappeared and in its place there is a section that appeared called Status Complete and underneath we see a couple of options. Depending on what your latest driverless AI version is, mine is driverless AI 1.10.5, you can choose to interpret the model, diagnose the model on a new data set, deploy the model, Download Predictions, Summary and Logs, Download Autodoc, Tune the experiment and Visualize and Download the Scoring Pipeline. Just a side note on the latter one. H2O Driverless AI automatically generates both Python Scoring and Java Low Latency Scoring Pipelines. The Scoring Pipeline is a unique technology that deploys the feature engineering and the winning machine learning model or ensemble in a highly optimized format that can be deployed anywhere. This technology is critical for enterprises running models that need fast scoring for real-time applications running on a range of devices. To download the scoring pipelines, you can click on the Download Scoring Pipeline button under the Status Complete and select between the Python Scoring Pipeline available for experiments and interpreted models and the Mojo Scoring Low Latency Pipeline, available for experiments with both Java and C++ backends. Let's say you want to download the Mojo Scoring Pipeline. Please click on Download Mojo Scoring Pipeline and additional instructions will be provided to you in the driverless AI user interface on how to use it. Then click on the Download button on the bottom of the window and the zip file will be downloaded on your computer in a couple of seconds. So, to come back to the main output, not only do we see the status complete instead of the progress wheel, but the iteration data for validation has been stopped and the best model has been chosen. On the bottom left side of the screen, we can see the final AUC value and on the right side of the screen, there is a new tab that appeared called Summary, which does exactly that. It gives a summary with respect to the experiment itself, the system specs, the timing for different intermediary steps, as well as the validation and the test score. Of course, this is just a short version of what we can find in the documentation that driverless AI automatically generates when the experiment is complete. And I'm going to show you how to download it in just a bit. Let's just spend a minute or so on the raw graph before moving forward. 
A rock curve is a graph showing the performance of a classification model, and the area under its curve is a measure of the accuracy of a model. This metric varies between 0 and 1, and the closer to 1 it is, the better our model is able to predict. Underneath our graph, there are two options to view the test set metrics or the validation metrics. We are going to stick with the results of the graph for the validation metrics. On the rock curve, we can see three circles, best F1, best MCC, and best AUC. If I hover over the best AUC circle, I am able to see a pop-up window of a confusion matrix which shows how many predictions are correct and incorrect per class in comparison to what the actual credit score values were. On the principal diagonal, I have yellow values representing the total number of around 13,000 good credit scores, which are correctly predicted as being good. Additionally, we have a total number of around 5,000 bad or poor credit scores, which were correctly predicted as being bad or poor. Overall, our best model does a good job as it accurately predicts around 90% of the credit scores. Depending on your business case, you might want to take a look at the values from the secondary diagonal and further learn why in almost 10% of the cases, our final model was not able to predict well. Might it be that some of the observations are too heterogeneous with respect to the majority and need particular attention? And if this is the case, do we need to eliminate them from our data set or treat them separately? What is more important to my business case? To have less prediction errors on the good credit score or have less prediction errors on the bad one? These are just a couple of questions that you might want to ask yourself. Driverless AI provides several visual explanations for the trained models. After the predictive model is finished, we have access to these visuals by generating an interpretability report or the MLI report. With that in mind, let us focus on the interpret the model step that you can find underneath the status complete of the baseline experiment. Please click on the button and then select with default settings. Driverless AI starts running several tasks and after a couple of moments, we are able to see the MLI explanations page, which contains the MLI report. The report will be completely ready when, on the top of the right side of the screen, the button shows the message that zero explanations are running. You can reach this page also by clicking on the MLI tab on the top of the screen. So, if I click on it now, I will see that there is a line containing an interpreted model, and this is the only one that I have because I did not trigger this interpreted model task before. Here, I can see the name of the report that was automatically generated. You can rename it by clicking on the three vertical dots on the left side of the report if you wish. I can also see the target, our credit score feature, the model on which the report was based on, our baseline, as well as the status, running or complete, and the runtime. Let's click on our report to go back on the MLI baseline explanations page once again. Here, when the status is complete, I can see that the MLI explanations page is organized into three tabs. Summary, which provides an experiment overview, the parameter summary, and lists the variables from the dataset for the model in descending order of importance, surrogate models, and DAI models. The DAI model tab is organized into tiles for each interpretation method. For binary classification and regression experiments, this tab includes feature importance and Shapley plots for original and transformed features, as well as partial dependence, disparate impact analysis, sensitivity analysis, and permutation feature importance plots. We are just going to take a glance at some of these plots, but please keep in mind that there are separate courses that you can access in case you want to go further into the details of the machine learning interpretation. So to view a specific plot, I'm going to click the tile for the plot and select the Shapley values for original features plot in the DAI models tab. 
This is a chart available for all binary classification, multi-class classification, and regression experiments, and it shows the features in descending order of importance for our best model. And this plot answers the question, which are the original features from our dataset which contribute the most to predict whether the credit score is bad or good. What I like about the Shapley graph is that you can search a particular application based on the row ID. This is a great functionality to have because I can search for each single row in my data set and its particular characteristics. Let's take a moment to evaluate the output that I got. But just before, for learning purposes, on another MLI report that I ran on the same data set, but with different settings, I have received the following results. Do you see anything peculiar here? If your answer was yes, then you are definitely on the right track. We can see that the name, the type of loan, occupation, age, are the features selected by our best model as being the most important in predicting the target outcome. The name feature does not make any logical sense here, as the decision of whether a credit score is good or bad should not be influenced by the name of the applicant. Maybe there is something else going on here? Let's go back to the details section of our dataset. Are there applicants who applied multiple times for a loan? Might that indicate to the algorithm a behavior that is worth considering? If I go on the Datasets tab and select the credit score.csv dataset and then click Details, I am able to see the descriptive statistics that we learned about at the beginning of the class. And what I observe is that out of the 100k applications, there are only around 10k unique applicant names and exactly 12,500 unique customer IDs. So, we learn a couple of things from here. First of all, in our dataset, we have the customer names, which are the same for different IDs, which could be normal. That's why we have IDs in the first place, to differentiate between people of the same characteristics, such as the name or the place of birth. This doesn't mean that they are the same person. Please note that driverless AI takes out the IDs by default when training a model. This is an option that you can also change in the expert settings of the experiment if you want. Secondly, we do indeed have applicants who applied multiple times. If we click on the dataset rows button, we have a preview of who some of them are. And there are a couple of them, for example, Ank. This person has the same customer ID, the same name, but different application IDs, four in total. Are there any duplicates? You might want to check for this too, and we saw earlier how to account for them in case you want driverless AI to take care of them from the expert settings. Depending on your business case, you might want to drop the feature name from your next experiment. Nevertheless, in the plot from our current MLI report, this redundancy has been taken into account by the driverless AI and the name appears on the second page of the Shapley values for original features plot.
Let's click on the X button on the top right side of the Shapley values for original features window and go back to the MLI tab where we will select the partial dependence plot which shows the model's prediction for different original values and the features. In this case, on the top left side of the plot, we can see that the feature shown on the screen right now with respect to the average prediction of the credit score for the poor and bad labels is the feature which had the biggest amount of importance. If you are curious, you can change the variable that appears on the horizontal axis from the top left side of the window. You have a couple of feature options and I will go with the interest rate as for the moment. The green dots show the estimated probability or the average prediction of the credit score to be bad or poor for the corresponding interest rate. For example, if I change the data set so everyone had an interest rate of 5, the average prediction from our model would be about 25%. Overall, the plot shows us that as the interest rate increases slightly, the probability of the credit score becoming bad increases too. Last but not least, let's take a look at our outstanding debt feature for this plot. Here, we can see that the majority of the applications have owners with less than $1,500 of debt not yet paid. Also, please note that an applicant with less than $1,000 is considered pretty secure as the average prediction of the credit score is pretty low. Additionally, for applications between $1,000 and $1,500, we see that the average prediction of a bad credit score begins increasing, reaching a peak for applications whose applicants have above $1,500. Is this because the behavior of applications with an outstanding debt of over $1,500 proves to be riskier and the credit score worse? or because we do not have enough observations in our data set to generalize well. Do we need to create another experiment for applications with an outstanding debt of over $1,500? These are yet other questions that we need to consider when interpreting the results of an experiment, when improving its output and making it generalize well. But what I know for sure is that if I were an applicant and I knew this information, I would better pay a third of my debt before applying so that I get a better credit score. Also, what I find great about this plot is that you can zoom in on a particular portion of the graph by clicking and dragging the red horizontal line underneath the main partial dependence plot, just like that. You can move the selected red portion around if you wish. The graph is very interactive and I find it very practical too. Let's now take a look at the surrogate models tab. Here we have two tiles. One is the decision tree plot and the other is a zip file that you can download and from which you can learn about the decision rules in pseudocode as well as in Python code. Next to the zip archive, we have the surrogate decision tree plot, which trains a simple decision tree model to find segments with high and low predictions. This is a global approximation visual and we can use it to identify simple rules to explain sections of our data. The decision tree surrogate model increases the transparency of the driverless AI platform by displaying an approximate decision tree flowchart. As it also can be used for visualizing, validating and debugging, the driverless AI compares important variables and interactions to known standards, domain knowledge, and reasonable expectations. The decision tree surrogate model is available for binary and multinomial classification models, as well as for regression models. Let's click on the plot. Here we see the overall view of the decision tree, and we observe that the most important feature, outstanding debt, is at the top. Variables higher in the decision tree suggest higher importance in the decision-making process. If I hover over the dot next to it, I see that it contains all of our 80,000 observations from the training dataset. The lower floors also show some decision criteria performed on the observations in our dataset based on the features that were considered the most important 
from our machine learning model. There will always be applications which fall on the right or on the left side of the node until there are no more applications to be partitioned and all of them arrive at the end to a particular leaf. And we have in total eight leaves, meaning eight decision rules that were created by driverless AI. All our data falls into one of these categories and these terminal nodes represent the different default probabilities. From the outstanding dead node, we see that there are two branches going down and if we hover over any of them, there is a pop-up window appearing with some split criteria information. All the applications which have an outstanding debt of less than around $1,500 go on the left branch, whereas the other ones go on the right branch. We already get an intuition of what we observed in the partial dependence plot before, because the next split criteria on the left side is our second most important feature, the interest rate. Let's hover over this interest rate dot too. Here I see that almost 68% of our train data set falls into this category. And if I further hover over the branch from the left side, we get the filtered applications which have an interest rate below around 21%. The last decision criteria is the credit mix bad, yet another important feature from our variable importance table. This left side is our thickest branch and it means that this is the most common path for the majority of the applications. So thick lines highlighting a particular path to a terminal node indicate a very common decision path. Additionally, the leaf nodes have numbers next to them and these numbers represent the average prediction of the model from rows that fall into this leaf node. Let's hover over the dot which is at the end of this thickest line. There are around 65% of applications which fall in this category and the average prediction percentage that the credit score is going to be bad for any of the applications is around 11%. These applications are safe according to our historical data. So in this graph, we can observe that the most common decision path for the credit score data set is the red one that I just selected by clicking the final leaf of the most left side value in the decision tree. Once I select a leaf, we can observe the definition of the segment in the form of a pseudo code and the Python code, both appearing on the left side of the screen. This is the same code that you can download in both formats, pseudo code and Python, directly from the surrogate models tab. What is great about the majority of the plots from the MLI reports is the fact that you can also search for an individual row number or ID on the top right corner of the screen, as well as click on the button show row to learn more about that particular application. Let's say that I'm interested in the ID number 6000. I can type in the value and see that the branch to which it belongs has been highlighted in white. This individual has a low probability of having a bad or a poor credit score based on the data that we have in the training. I can also click on show row to see the information on this particular application in more detail. Let's take another example. If I type in the ID number 5888, there is another branch that gets highlighted. This application has a high probability of having a bad score. If I hover over the leaf, there are only around 15% of the applications which fall in this category. The branch up to this last dot is very thin, so please take note that thin lines indicate that this is a relatively rare decision path. If I click on the leaf for the end dot, I can see the decision rules for this category, among which an outstanding debt of more than $1,500 and an interest rate higher than 14.5%.
Now, let's go back to our completed experiment in the Experiments tab and select the baseline model. Underneath Interpret this model, there is a Diagnose model on a new dataset button, which we can click to access the Diagnose model's functionalities. Let's select the Credit Score Test dataset for this case. This action will bring us to the Diagnostics tab, where we have just created a new Diagnostics row. The message indicates that this request is currently computing predictions and after a couple of moments we are going to see new messages indicating the status of the action. Please note that we can create as many diagnostics as we want by clicking on the plus diagnose model button. When the model diagnostics is complete, and we can see the time that it took in the Diagnostics tab on the last column, we can click to open the Diagnostics. On the top left side of the screen, we receive some information about the dataset that we used for the model diagnostics, the number of rows, the experiment name, and the target column. Underneath the Info section, we can see all the scores that have been computed by the Diagnostics model on the test dataset. And on the right side, we also have the Download Predictions button, which will give us a CSV file with the predicted percentage of good and bad credit score for each one of the 20,000 rows in our dataset. Underneath this button, you can see Interact with and download in a PNG format a couple of metric plots specific to the experiment type, plots which also appear on the completed experiment page. We have rock curve, precision recall curve, cumulative gain, lift chart, kolmogorov smirnov chart, and the confusion matrix. Please do not hesitate to take your time and explore them if you wish. Next up, the Visualize Scoring Pipeline button, which shows you a visual overview of what your completed experiment for the final model looks like. This is a pipeline that begins with all the original features from the dataset, which are used as an input for our two final XGBoost models. Each one of the models is using a four-fold cross-validation technique to shuffle the dataset. And if you are wondering how does driverless AI determine the number of cross-validation folds or of the models, wonder no more, because this is related to the knob settings that we decided upon before launching the experiment. After the two models have been trained, they are combined together using stacked methods to give the final predictions. At the end of the pipeline, we can see that the outputs for our prediction are our two unique labels from the target feature, credit score good or bad. You can also further drill down to get a better understanding of what your feature engineering process is. If you click on the first model, you have access to the pipeline visualization inside, and in the first layer, you can see all the original features. On the second layer, you can observe the transformers that have been applied on each feature being fed on the machine learning model. Additional note here, the fitted features of the final model are the best features found during the feature engineering iterations, and the target transformer indicates the type of transformation applied to the target column. If you click on the model itself, there is a new world opening to us with all the decision criteria used. You will also be able to see this detailed pipeline in the documentation that is automatically generated by driverless AI in the chapter called Final Model. Let's take a look at it next. Driverless AI has by default the auto documentation option enabled in the Expert Settings tab, and we can download it underneath the status complete from the experiments page. The AutoDoc feature is used to generate automated machine learning documentation for individual driverless AI experiments. This editable document contains an overview of the experiment and includes other significant details like feature engineering and final model performance. Let's click on the Download AutoDoc button. Currently, a document in a docx format is being downloaded on my personal computer. I am going to open it so that we can take a look inside. Here we have everything we need to know about the experiment 
And this is a very useful functionality for many companies who need to have visibility and explainability on the models that they are using for predictive purposes. On the first page, we have the experiment name, the user, and the date on which the experiment has been completed. We also have a table of contents with information about a lot of things, including data overview, model tuning, feature evolution, and feature transformation, the best predictive model, and additional plots. Almost everything that you can find in the experiment page, once it is completed, appears in the AutoDoc. Let's navigate through the document just a bit. If we scroll down, we are going to find information about the performance of the best model, the knob settings, and the version of the driverless AI platform used to create the experiment. Underneath, we have a section concerning the data set itself, meaning the training and the testing input data sets. Please notice that we did not add any validation data set, but this is something that you can definitely do. Here, we also get information about the features which have been used and their type. Next up, we have information about the numeric columns, their descriptive statistics, and the categorical variables. Underneath, we have the experiment methodology and additional information on the optimal experiment pipeline. We begin with ingesting the data and detecting the column types, then the raw features are pre-processed and turned into numeric values, and there are even more model and feature tuning steps after this. Next up, we see that driverless AI created the best model from the feature engineering iterations. If you scroll further, you will find various plots and the final model chapter that I told you about earlier, where you can find the final model and the pipeline presented in a nice visualization. The scoring pipeline is yet another interesting topic, so please keep in mind that both Python and Mojo scoring pipelines are available for deployment purposes and for productionizing the final model pipeline for a given row of data or table of data. Additional information about this can also be found within the deployment chapter of the Autodoc. You can find way more information in this document, so please don't hesitate to take your time and explore it.
Now that we almost reached the end of our session, let's go to the Projects tab and add our experiment to a new project. As a reminder, here is the place where you can organize your work. By creating new projects and linking experiments and datasets to them, comparing experiments, analyzing results, scoring datasets, or sharing your projects with peers. Please click on the Projects tab on the top side of the screen and then click on the New Project button. There is a new pop up window which appears and we are requested to give a name to our project. Let's name it DAI starter course and give the following description, part of the H2O driverless AI learning path. Now, please click the button below to create a new project. We will arrive at a new window which indicates that there is no experiment available for our newly created project. We need to add the baseline experiment ourselves by clicking on the Link Experiments button. Here, please select the option by selecting experiments and click on the baseline experiment and then done. The experiment is being uploaded to the project and now we can see it on the projects tab. Here, you can also see the datasets linked to the experiment if you click on show datasets. And there are a lot of great options that you can use in the projects, such as the possibility to analyze results and compare experiments. If you click back on the Projects tab, you are going to see your DAI Starter Course project. And by clicking on the three vertical dots from the left side, you can also open, rename, edit description, delete the project, or share it with your peers. An important note here, if you store the experiment in a project as we just did, you have the possibility to deploy your experiment in our MLOps application. But this is for another time, so please refer to the H2O University platform to see and follow on the recommended MLOps courses. Congratulations, you reached the end of your introduction to H2O driverless AI. I hope that you loved your journey with us so far and that you are motivated to continue creating wonderful machine learning experiments with driverless AI, an AI platform which makes your life easier by automating data science workflows. As mentioned before, this learning path is part of the H2O University and certification program specifically designed for you to onboard on some of the basic functionalities of the driverless AI. Next up, please take the final knowledge quiz so that you can validate your understanding of the course materials, receive your certificate of completion for this learning path, and share it with your peers. Feel free to give us a feedback about how your experience has been so far, and we are more than happy to see you again on the H2O University platform, taking another interesting learning path to enhance your data science journey. Have a wonderful day. Cheers.